So Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, verse 23. Now this is after Peter has asked Jesus, you know what, can I forgive seven times? And Jesus is like, no, seven times, 70 times seven. And then he goes right into a parable, an illustration. And it's, this parable illustration is not salvation. Definitely in the church age, but let's read it. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven, that's trees, birds, dirt, buildings, people. It's not the kingdom of God. Big difference. And the kingdom of heaven in Matthew is because we're talking about the king, the king of all the earth, the king of the Jews. In the millennium. Right now, the ruler of this world is Satan, the god of this world. It's likened to a certain king. Not any king. But there is a certain king, small k, it's not Jesus. Because every time you saw a big k in the Bible, that's Jesus. Oh, this parable, which would take account of his servant. So what he's doing is, he, he's called the bookkeepers in. And he said, well, let's balance the book. I have loaned money <clears throat> to my servants. My servants have been in charge of my funds. They sell things for me. They do things for me. All right, now call the book in. So, and when he had begun to reckon, this means making things right, checking the books, adding the figures, subtracting the figures, one was brought unto him, the king, which owed him 10,000 talents. Now, talents is the Jewish way. Right now, today, there's a new uh, Israel shekel, S-H-E-Q-E-L. Um, and the, the, the coins of the Jews is called an agarut, A-G-U-R-U-T. Now, the shekel to show you, I mean, the talent to show you something about the talent is, First Corinthians. I mean, excuse me, First Chronicles. To show you the value of what this guy owed. First Chronicles chapter 29, 7. Now I prepared with all my might the house of my God. The gold for the things that are made of gold, and the silver for the things to be made of silver, the brass for the things of brass, and iron things for iron, and wood for the things of wood, onyx stones, stones to be set, gasoline stones, diver stones, all men and precious stones. So this is the temple. In verse 7, he gave the service of the house of God of gold 5,000 talents and 10 thousand drams of silver ten thousand talents this is how much this guy owed ten thousand talents ten thousand ta talents was all the silver Solomon put in that house of God Esther Esther chapter 3 verse 9 if it please the king that it be written that they may be destroyed all the Jews by Haman. And I, Haman, will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those who have charge over the bill. 10,000 talents of silver that went into the house of the Lord. Haman said, hey, listen, we can have a proclamation to kill all the Jews. I will put 10,000 talents in the pot. 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel 12, I hope, my writing is terrible, 1230, and he took the king's crown, this is for David, I believe this is uh, Reba, he took the king's crown that he puts on his head, that off his head, and the weight thereof was a talent of gold with precious stones. Now, I don't know how much that, that 
crown would weigh. But here is the same amount sent out of gold, not silver, that David's going to put on his head. So we have all the silver in the temple. We have all the silver that Haman will pay for the death of the Jews. The house of God, the death of the Jews. And here is the crown that's put on David's head. Is that interesting? Um, one talent of silver equaled 3,000 shekels. You'll find that in Ezekiel 28, 25, and 26. We won't look at that. So back to Matthew. I, I'm going to assume, I mean, all the silver that went in the house of God, I'm going to assume this guy owes quite a bit of money. But for, for as much, Matthew 18, 24, as much as he had not to pay, he couldn't pay it. And what we just saw about the talent, it's a lot. His Lord, that would be the king, commanded him to be sold. Or the Lord could now be the, rec the, the bookkeeper. Over the accounts. You know, God keeps accounts, God keeps records, God keeps books. We have a king and we have a lord. But they're not capitalized. Commanding him to be sold. Alright? We're gonna put you on this uh, we're gonna put you on the market. We're gonna just sell you. And his wife and children. He say Oh boy, what was his name? No, I meant his name. Oh boy, um, I hate that happens. You put the head right, you put the name right in your head, it comes to the tongue, and it. Oh boy, the, the one that Joshua had killed because he took the gold, the silver, and the Babylonian garment. It was his family, his wife, his children, and, it, and the animals were put to death. And several times you will come in the Bible, you'll see it's such a thing the family suffers. And the thing is, the wife knows, the children know, you are responsible for your family, your family is responsible for you. All this crime that these children are doing today, it's the fault of the father. And if there is no father, he's gone, not because of death. But he's just gone because he's making other babies, he's doing other things, he's got other... And the mother. I guarantee that most of these children, I said most, not all, I guarantee most of these children involved in the crimes today are not sitting home with a prayerful dad and a prayerful mother and children and the opening of the Bible and the teaching of the Bible and of the spanking on the rear end that should happen and explaining to your children why they're getting disciplined, why they're in trouble. He himself, his wife and children are going to be put on the market. We're going to sell them. And all that he had, all his goods, his houses, his camels, his ass, whatever. It goes on the auction block. And payment to be made. So even so, after they sell him, his wife and his children, they'll probably be separated. All the money of the goods that he has will be sold, and all the work that he does, all the work that the wife will do, and all the work that the children, children labor. All the mean, nasty children labor. Hey, children labored in the Bible times. Their money would go to the king until payment to be made in full. We got... Big corporations today, big grocery stores, big name people, political people. We got uh, uh, monsters of industry. We got all kinds. They're out there bankrupting. And they come out a fortune. When you got a big grocery store chain or big company and they go bankrupt and they're still in business, that's not Bible. 
Now, I understand it because I can speak because I had to go bankrupt twice with medical bills. It came overpowering. Christians do have to suffer as wrong as it is, as much as you feel it's a mean, nasty sin, as much as adultery. It happens. Do you realize when Jesus is traveling with Peter, there was no money? How do you know that? Peter, do we owe taxes? Well, we really don't. Oh, we're not going to offend him. Go down to the river, to the, to the sea, put a fish hook in the water. The, fish, the first fish you get will have a coin. Why would you need the pocket fish or the pocketbook, which the disciples carried, if Jesus and, the, and they didn't have the money? So, as bad as you think it is, as worse as you think it, in your own little heart, in your own little brain, God, Jesus Christ said, if you have a debt, the, the king sold the wife, the children, and the man, and everything he had. That man has to restart his life. I've had to done it three times. I had to give up a house. I had to give up a car. I had to move out. And thank God my father-in-law took us and the kids. That's because my wife died. I had to restart all over again when my, my second wife died. Right now, pretty much, I'm restarting again. I haven't been sold. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him. The Lord or the king, or, or not, they're both the same. You know, Jesus is the same as God, and God is the same as Jesus, unless you're a Jehovah Witness, and you're a liar. I mean, that worship him comes as close today as, as Republicans in America are worshiping Donald Trump. Saying, Lord, that capital L is that be, that's beginning, of, you know, there's no quotations in the Bible for speaking. To start a quote, it's, it's a capital letter after a comma. Have patience with me. Who has patience but God? And I will pay thee all. Well, he ain't got no money right now. You're going to have to put me in an IOU. You're going to have to give me a credit card. Then the Lord of the servants... So it's not the king, it's the, the boss, the foreman, the reckoner, was moved with compassion. That's what Jesus, compassion is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We have a, a sin debt of a, 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 a hundred thousand talents that we can't afford. Silver. Silver, gold, silver is the price of redemption. If I were to go to, if any unsaved person today appeared before God, God says you have a debt of a hundred thousand talents and you ain't got nothing. I don't care if you got prayer. I don't care if you got religion. I don't care if you got beads. I don't care if you got statues. I don't care how many old ladies you walk across the street. I don't care how much money you give to uh, charities. I don't care how many dishes you wash. I don't care how many cats you adopt. I don't care what you do. I don't care how many thank yous you got, how many welcomes you got, how many times, how many times. It does not meet to the 100,000 talents of sin that you owe. Matter of fact, walking up to God and thinking how great you are, that's a sin right there. Walking up to God and saying, well, I'm a... I fell into religion. That's a sin right there because it's not Jesus Christ. And the books are open at the great white throne judgment. And your works will be weighed against the Calvary, the death, the suffering, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. You're not going to top that. 
I don't care how many confession booths you went to. I don't care how many names of their ancestral family. I don't care how many watchtowers you sold or gave out. I don't care if you went in a monastery and lived as a monk for 75 years. I don't care if you're the queen. I don't care if you're the king. I don't care if you're the president. I don't care if you're a preacher. I don't care if you're a missionary. I don't care if you're an evangelist. If you don't have Jesus, you have a sin debt you can't, you can't pay off. You need compassion of God. You need the love of God. We love him because he first loved us. Calvary. Why Calvary? Because God loves us. Why the nails? Because God has compassion on us. And loosed him. And forgave us of the debt. That, that reminds me of a verse. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse us. That man, in verse 27, has been forgiven a debt, and the debt has been erased. You go in the books and you erase it. My checkbook would be, uh, I paid a company $100, even number. And I get, a, I get a check in the mail, Mr. Haver, you don't owe this amount, or our record show, there is no, there is no, here's $100 of refund. So I would put under the debit, $100, and I would put under the deposit, $100, that would come out zero in the records. That's what it's saying right now. But for for God and the forgiveness and, and sin and cleansing, he takes the eraser of the blood of Jesus Christ, which is God's blood, Acts 20, 28, and he erases it. That's why it's so important to confess your sins as soon as you know the knowledge of sin. Because when the devil goes up to heaven, goes before the throne of God, Job 1 and 2, you see what Stalin did, and God turns to the son, the son looks and he says, Father, all I see is my blood. Turns to Satan, I don't know what sin you're talking about. Why don't you go take a fly and leap into... into the, the lake of fire, because as far as, as the east is from the west, as far as the deepest ocean, that's where his sin went. I don't know his sin. If anybody came up now, in verse 27a, if, or b, 27.5, I know there's no 27, but I'm saying, if somebody came up in verse 28, 1827.5, and said, well, you know, this guy owes you $100,000, bring the records. I don't see no record. Oh, come on, he owed. No, come on, I don't see no record. A certain king. You know, that's exactly what he's going to do with the nation of Israel at the millennium. He's, their sins they are going to remember no more. He's going to cleanse them. He's going to give them a new heart. He's going to give them a new love for God. This is not a Christian I'm talking about. This is the nation of Israel. They have a debt. They've been collecting debt. Right now, they're into sodomy. They're open and pride and the rainbow and everything like that. And they're selling that land, which the law says they're not to do. The law says you're not to, to move that landmark. That's not church. That's not America. That's Israel. That's exactly what they're doing today. They're not going to the temple that's not there for the Passover and for the, the tabernacle when Jesus was born. And the day of atonement, they can't. The temple's not there. They have not believed on the Messiah. They have not believed on the Lord Jesus. They're adding sin, adding sin, adding sin, adding sin. It's funny because when you have somebody show you the Passover meal, they will put at an empty spot at the head of the table. They will set it up, and on that plate, there's a bone of a lamb. Yet the Bible says not a bone of him was broken. Israel right now is sinning, sinning, sinning as a nation. Individuals could be saved. But, the same servant that has been forgiven, jumping up and down, hallelujah, glory to God, honey, let's go to the restaurant, and let's have to go to the best restaurant, have the best food. We, I don't owe no, no more.
The servant went out. He's with Jesus. Now, it's going to come to the thing is, this servant is going to lose his soul in the end. That's not a Christian. A Christian can be saved. A Christian can be cleansed. A Christian can, walk, can be washed. Yes, a Christian can sin. Yes, a Christian can not go to church. Yes, a Christian may not read his Bible. A Christian may not pray. He's still saved, always saved, will never lose his salvation. This guy will lose it. This proves right here. Matthew 18 is not is not, is not, is not. We'll keep saying that for an hour. But you won't watch the rest of the video. Not church age doctrine. I was, in, I was in church. You know how many times we open up to the book of Matthew? All right, we'll start off with Mark. Okay, let's go over to Matthew. I like Luke. I like Luke. Well, let's go over to Matthew. And then use perverted words. Oh, the season of Christ Mass. Oh, the greatness of the birth of Jesus Christ Mass. Say it right. It's not a compound word. Check the dictionary. When the dictionary says, Webster says, the origin of Chris Mass is Christ Mass. There's only one Mass. That's Catholic Church. Oh, come on, Stalin. It's December 26th. I know, we're celebrating the crisp mess of going to the store and getting the money back for all the crap you got that you don't like. And you finally got the chance to go get the batteries you forgot that your children are now screaming. Because they couldn't work the G.I. Joe figures shooting everybody in Barbie. Oh, forgot the batteries. That always happens at our Christmases. Forgot the batteries. My mom used to, she used to hide the batteries. The next day after Christmas, she'd say, you've been a good boy. I said, okay, yeah. And she'd pull out a Christmas stocking and says, there's a battery for all your toys. See, if I whined, if I cried, baby, if I had a, a fit because there was no batteries for, for those toys, I wouldn't got those batteries. My mom disciplined me. I, you know what I thank God I tell about my mama? My mama saved today. My mom fed my conscience where if I do something wrong, my conscience said, oh boy. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, a co-worker. Or maybe he's a, a servant of a different position. You know, there were servants in the fields. There were servants in the house. There were all kinds of servants. Which owed him a hundred pence. That pence comes to be where we kind of get the word penny. That's how a fraction of that word is. Now we go over to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Verse number, I hope that's an E. Yeah, that's not an E. That looks like a 12. So let me come over here. We'll try pins. My writing is terrible, and I'm sorry. Okay, we're looking for John. Here he is. All right, John 12, 5. That's a 5? Phew. All right, John 12, 5. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? All right, so this ointment that I believe was Mary breaks open, and is it the head of Jesus? Mary took a pound of ointment of spikener, and anointed the feet of Jesus. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on here. We have silver, silver, gold. We have the temple killing the Jews, which they didn't. He was killed. Amen. We have a crown we have a servant who has a debt he can't pay, and it's forgiven. Now we have ointment, 300 pence, and anoints the feet of Jesus that bear the nails. The nails. Have you read Genesis 3.15?
But back to ours. Uh, five. Yeah. That's a weird five. Why was not this ointment, ointment, okay, a pound of ointment sold for 300 pence? Now, you're not going to get full value when you sell something that's, that's used. By the way, this is the word of Judas. Look at verse 4. Judas was the treasurer, verse 6. There's a man called to reckoning. 300 pence for a pound of ointment. This man, back to Matthew, this man, get to the right place, Verse 28 had a hundred pence. Three pounds of anoint, anointment. Um, ointment. A hundred pence is nothing. A hundred thousand talents is a month. This servant who has been forgiven goes up to somebody who, who you can buy three pounds of ointment. Now, excuse me. 300 pence, 200 pence more, he could buy a pound of ointment. He laid hands on him. He's assaulting the guy. I've seen that happen. I've seen two men get in such a fight over money or something. And took him by the throat. Saying pay me that thou owest. A hundred thousand talents. He's just been forgiven. He's shouting hallelujah glory to God. He walks up to a servant. I bet you this fellow servant was walking down the street when this guy is walking down the street. Hey! Stop! And starts assaulting him over a hundred pence. I wonder how many pences equals a talent. I don't have the answer. Took him by the throat saying, pay me thou owest. You imagine if your bill collector did that, you could sue them and pay all your bills off. His fellow servant fell down at his feet like he did. With his Lord. Besought him saying. Have patience with me. Okay. Have patience with me. Look. At verse number. 26. Lord have patience with me. Same word. Amen. Yeah. God's feet said, have patience with me. I will pay thee all. Look at verse 26. Have patience with me. I will pay thee all. He uses the very same words he uses before the Lord, and he was forgiven. He would not, verse 30. Now remember, Peter said, how many times should I forgive my fellow servants? Seven times? Jesus says 70 times 70, and now he comes up with this parable, this story, which is probably true, because he said there was a certain king. No imaginary king, no, you know, there was fairy tale land, and there's the woman, she's scrubbing the floors, and the, the, the prince comes and smells her felly feet, and they go off in a happy land with three little piggies. I don't know. I can make up a story just as good as they do. You should see some of my dreams. And would not, but went and cast him into prison. That's what you call a debtor's prison. I know a politician who owns businesses, and his businesses, I believe, was three or six times, I forget which number, went bankrupt. 
That man, instead of going into our top capital building, she went into prison. Instead of, you know, mega. That's called a debtor's prison. What is, you go into prison, you go work, you go do jobs, you earn money, that money goes to who you owe. That's how it was back then. You went into a labor camp. You didn't come out of prison to the very pence was paid. This man that assaulted the other man would have spent a lot more time in prison than this man that owes him a pence. I mean pence at something little. It wasn't enough to have his family sold in his possession. Because you know what? As far as a pence, if you got sold his wife and his children and his son, there would be more money. I would assume maybe a house would be worth a hundred pence. I assume. I don't know about the money in the Bible. So you would cast him into prison, put him under torture, put him under extreme labor. And I guarantee they would give you some money so you can pay for some food or something. But your money went to who you owe till he should pay the debt. You stay in the prison till you come, you pay it off. The books say zero. So his fellow servants, other co-workers, saw what was done. And it always questions me, why didn't they stop him from assaulting the guy? Unless 31 happened days later. Did you hear who was in prison? No. Isaac, who took care of the horses, or whatever he did. What did he do? He didn't go out and get drunk again. No, 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 no. You know, you, you know Mark over there in the house? You know, he does all the beds and pillows. Are, yeah. The guy, the guy holds the king 100,000 talents. Wow. And the king forgave him. What? All that? The king said, wipe it off, take care of it, it's gone. Well, what's he have to do with Isaac? Isaac owed him 100 pence. That's nothing. It's a month pay or whatever it is. He had him put in prison to everything. He did what? After what the king just did to him? you got to be kidding me. You know, that guy owes me a bottle of goat's milk. He, he better give me my goat's milk. Whatever. So the fellowship, the fellowship, the fellow servants, you can tell them, Baptist, saw what was done. They were very sorry. You know, they weren't so like, they're very sorry for the man that's in prison. And came and told unto their Lord that all that was done. You know, they all worked together, their fellow servants. And there was a problem. And they went to the boss. They say, boss, there's something going on here. You need to know. They're not tattling. They're not tattling. To, they're telling the truth. They're not uh, gossiping. It's the truth. That's Bible. And you, won't, you know what will get to happen? You know, today, everybody gets offended. Everybody gets up. You know what happened back then? All around those guys, I better not do wrong. You know, I'm a Christian. My job, when I worked for the newspaper, they knew I was a Christian. They, they would apologize in front of me. If they, if they would cuss and they turned around and saw me, I'm so sorry. We didn't know you were here. I, I, I had bosses that, oh, man, I, I, I'm so sorry about that dirty joke style. I didn't know you were in the room. It don't bother me. These men went to the king and told them what happened. They're telling them the truth.
It's not the church because Jesus says in the church, you go deal with the person yourself. They're not dealing with the guy. They're dealing with it. With, they went straight to the top. They went to the pastor. And there's no church. Jesus says in the church, go to the person yourself. You got a problem. And we don't take two or three. They got the two or three, but they went right to the king. You know what? There are angels. There is Satan and his devil. That when you do wrong, they go to God. God, you won't see. Behold, the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold, the evil and the good. And there were watchers. Who were those watchers in Daniel's time? And the Bible says that there are angels that walk up and down. They're ministers and they're proclaimers. And told unto their Lord all that was done. That Lord is their boss. Really, I, I, I shouldn't say king. I was wrong. It's their boss. They went to the boss. The king would be the owner of everything. The boss. The foreman. The white hat guy. Then his Lord. The boss. After that he had called him. He called that guy. Mark. Into my office. Now. You ever been at work and one of your employees say, hey, you know, the boss told me to go see you in his office. Okay, now. And you start walking off. Ooh, you in trouble. I've had that happen. I I work for submarines. I'd be in a submarine one day and I'm doing my business. I've got all those guys walking around. And one of the white hats will come up to me and says, Styley? You Styley? Yes, I am. Carl wants to see you. I get up, put my tools down, and I start walking. Everybody, like, I say, "Oh, shut up, will you?" And said unto him, "O thou wicked servant!" Is that what it says? Wicked. I got five cents for you. You don't have to pay me back. You ready? Dum, 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 dum. I've been waiting all day to say this. I even put it on Facebook. Are you a creditor that calls somebody to you owe money, you owe money, you owe money, you owe us money, you owe us money, you owe us money, you letters, this letter is, is to settle a debt. Do you have a debt? Are all your bills paid? If all your bills are not paid, you're going after somebody who owes you money. You are a wicked sir. You're going to stand before God one day. Don't you dare send your letter. Don't you dare send it to a credit agency if you have debt too. I've been waiting to say that all day. Don't tell, I, I'll tell you right now, next time a phone call, and I, it's a credit, a business collector, I would say, excuse me, sir, do you have all your bills paid right now? Do you owe anybody any money right now? Oh, yeah, you have no right to talk to me. Goodbye. Oh. You can't come after me. Excuse me. You can't come after me if somebody can come after you. You're going to stand before Jesus one day, saved or lost. There's, there's a man that ran for government, Mega, and he collects rent after he went bankrupt three or six times. I forget what, what the number is. His businesses went bankrupt. How dare you collect money from other people when the people you owed money couldn't collect? When you couldn't pay your employees, I thank God time stops before the great white throne judgment. When his Lord said, he called me and said, Oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all thy debt. Thank you. All. Because thou desired. You asked me. You begged me. You worshipped me. Should not thou also had compassion in thy fellowship? Fellowship. I'm Baptist. Fellow servant. Even as he had pity on thee. So they told the king everything. So that guy asked for forgiveness just like you did. 
You know, God knows it all. And his Lord was raw. That's what hell is. For, he, for whosoever has the Son shall have everlasting life. Whosoever has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God. That's hell. This man, one time, he was saved, law. Then he broke the law. Now he's a wicked sir. Listen, you can be a wicked Christian and still go to heaven. Let's keep on reading. And his Lord was rough and delivered him to tormentors. Did you read what Jesus said about the man that was in hell in Luke? I'm being tormented, tormenting under torments. Till ye shall pay all that was due unto him. There's a hundred thousand talents again. He could not pay. Now, when you go into hell, you don't make no money. There's nothing put on the records. So you just stay in hell for all eternity because you can't earn money to go to hell. I mean, to get out of hell. I don't care what, what the game said. You know, you go into hell, you roll the dice three times, and if you get doubles, you can get out. Or if you pay, I don't know what the board today is. Uh, it used to be $50, I think, when I used to play the game. And after fifty dollars, you can get out, or you got to get the car, get out of hell free. That don't happen in hell. You know what happens when you get in hell? Go straight to hell. Don't collect fifty dollars or hundred, whatever it was. Or go by right by go. And you're in torment. I thought this guy was saved. I thought this guy was in good favor with the king. Not under the law. Not when there's no church aid. Not when there, is the, there has been no suffering, no death, no burial, and no resurrection of Jesus. Matthew is not church age doctor. That's just as bad as people running to Hebrews. Hebrews is for Christians. Wait a minute. H e b r e w, c h r i s t i a n. I guess they're not teaching spelling in the public school systems anymore. But you can learn how to use a condom. You can teach that. You're not a girl. You're not a boy. You can be whatever you want to be. Mm -hmm. One plus one equals six. That's what you say. We'll be very pleased to teach it. Now on children, David says one plus one equals six. Oh, teacher, I say it's nine. Okay, everyone, now Sally says it's nine, so it's one plus one is nine. And David says one plus one is seven. And then when David goes work for uh, we're a fast food restaurant or Sally goes work for the grocery store, when you get your change back, it will not be the right change. Has that happened to you? We were one time, my wife Lisa and I, we were at the grocery store one time, and we bought groceries that came up, and she handed them a 10 or 20, whatever it was, and boom, the power went out. That cashier turned to my wife. She says, do you know uh, what 10 or 20, whatever, minus whatever the bill was, do you know how much change you get back? My wife correctly told her what it was, but I told Lisa in the car, I said, you could have said anything. You, uh, let's say let's say it was a $10 bill. I said, you could have said 20 She would probably give you 20 back. You know what I had to do when I worked for a cashier at two, uh, two stores? I had to count out. You don't even dare see, see a cashier do that today. That was that shirt. That was 15 cents. You don't owe me. Till thou hast paid all that has been due unto him. So likewise, right? Here's, here's the summary of the whole story. Shall your heavenly Father, F, capitalize, God, do also unto you, if you from your heart forgive everyone his brother. Now for the Jew, that was everybody around him. That neighbor, his brother, would be you know, if he's of the 12 tribes of Israel, their trespasses. Right? You find that in what they call the Lord's Prayer. 
Now, notice there's an important word here. It says, if you from your heart. All right, I forgive you. And you hold it over their head every single time. That's not from the heart. Now, listen, I, I told somebody who committed a very violent crime. I said, I forgive you after you ask for forgiveness. I said, the person that you violated, I said, okay, I, I forgive them. But we can't forget. Forget is not forgive. And I'm telling you right now, when you're done doing your deeds, your, your duty, you're going to have to prove. Because I'm not going to, you know, open all hearts door and all things. You're going to have to prove your, your confession. Because you can forgive from the heart, which is right. Or you can forgive and not be right. See, everything in the Bible comes from your heart. You can love a woman with your heart and all you want everything for your desire. Or you can love a woman for her butt, for her breasts, and other parts of her body. You can love a woman for her money. You can love a woman because it would advance your career. That's not hard. You can love your child so you can put on your IRS, hey, look at all the dependents I've got. Look at all the different husbands I have. After all, if you have sex with a man, the Bible says it's a husband, even though you never got married. Look at all the children I got. And look, I get more money from the state for each of their child. You know, you know what's making me mad today? They are giving the stimulus money for everyone who has children. I'm sorry. V veterans of the military and Social Security recipients needs them money more than a woman who will have 20 kids so the government will give her more money. So what you're doing, America, with your stimulus is you are legalizing and putting a government cash box at the foot of her bed paying for the prostitute to make more children. That, cost, that didn't cost you a dollar. I'll let you have that one for free. Where that came from, I don't know. But if you want God to forgive you, and this is that Lord's Prayer, you have to, from your heart, forgive the person who violated. And don't go 391, 392, 393, 397, 398, 390. Okay, I'm done forgiving you. Well, you know, Scripture said, Jesus says 70 times 70, so I got to 490 times I'm done forgiving you. Oh, man. Come on, you're a Pharisee. I wonder what the look on Peter's face when Jesus said that. Seven times, Lord? No, 70 times 70. I could just imagine the look on his face. I can imagine the look on his fingers like, I ain't got that many fingers. <laughs> and then Jesus comes up with this story. I wonder why. We know the character of Peter. By the way, by the way, Peter is going to do something in his life. And three times he's going to confess to Father, Jesus. Lord, you know I love you. Lord, you know as I love you. Lord, you really know I love you. And he will be forgiven. I wonder if he forgave all the 11 disciples. What was his attitude towards Judas? You know what their all attitude in Acts chapter 1? or Yeah, 1. He transgressed. There's 11 of us. Let's get number 12 and move on. You know, they didn't say anything bad about Judas. Peter cut a man's ear off because the life of Jesus was threatened. 
It was all because of Judas. Peter didn't hate the guy. He just saw that Jesus was in trouble and whipped out that sword. What causes bitterness is when you have somebody saved or lost and you will not forgive them. That bitterness is because you violated what God... And this can be a church doctrine, verse 35. Unforgiveness by you from your heart to others can bring forth bitterness. And this is, you know, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. You want to be forgiven? But see, that's not church age doctrine either. Because all we got to do is confess it. But our confession is to come from our heart. And if you cannot, as a Christian, forgive somebody from your heart, you're not going to bring it from your heart before God. Because with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. The issue of people is heart, never the brain. 